What's up guys, Flirty Picker here coming at you with my June update a little late as usual. Back to my kind of normal schedule, but I have been really busy with actually Amazon FBA and launched my private label products. I've been spending quite a bit of time on that. And I actually had a pretty decent June. I know June's usually slow. Uh what you know when typically when things slow down in June, the best thing you can do is just list. And I started I listed a lot, but I also listed more quality, kind of trying to stay away from things that are under ten bucks, under twenty really trying to net at least $25 on each sale and it's going pretty well it's actually going very well Amazon's is is a beast also uh, and I had some couple returns on Amazon which I sold on eBay and I'll go through a couple of those as well and probably most importantly um, this I got scammed by a, a career scammer on eBay and I'm gonna, gonna expose him here let you guys know his name here at the end of the video it's the last item I'm gonna talk about but if you sell on eBay you want to block this person I contacted eBay and they basically did nothing. Uh, they opened a case against him, but you will see all the all the evidence that I have against him, and it's kind of actually mind blowing that this guy's been doing it for this long. Uh, but <clears throat> Amazon Amazon's doing very well, and I know there's a lot of people going saying you know Amazon versus eBay and this and that. In my opinion, if you're going to do this for you know for 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 a living, you have to do both. And the reason is Amazon just you can get a lot more money for certain items on Amazon and if you do get returns you need an outlet to sell those things and the perfect outlet for that is eBay and also any kind of damaged items or any parts or vintage antique type items you know obviously they sell on eBay so just my opinion no no right or wrong answer obviously but my my recommendation is to do both if you're gonna primarily do Amazon at least have an eBay account and just to sell some things and just to have an outlet to sell certain certain items you can't sell on Amazon but without further ado here is my eBay sales update for June and again I will uh, let you guys know about the situation with the scammer um, not all the gl glitters is gold not everything is good I, I try to be as transparent as possible I try to show some bad sales and some bad purchases uh, so I want to show you guys kind of exactly what happened with this other guy but first up here is a uh, Columbia uh, this is actually kind of a nice one. It's a titanium. They call it an Omni Dry fleece. The sides here were uh, a little bit like a thinner material, which is really nice. Um, sold for forty bucks. I, I don't. I try to not do clothing unless I'm going to get this kind of money at least for it. Uh, Columbia, and this is in June, guys. I mean, it's you know I sold jackets and I sold sweaters in June, like it's like it's going out of style. So don't you know? Obviously, sales for winter items are going to be higher in the winter but don't sleep on this stuff this stuff you can find for pretty cheap in the summertime and believe it or not it still will sell so don't sleep on it another item not to sleep on the Sony uh, subwoofer it's a 250 watt there are people that have you know surround sound systems and sometimes these subs may go out um, a lot of times it's just a fuse but some people may not you know know how to fix all that and they are just looking for a sub or they may have a, a, a home system that the sub's kind of weak and they have a good receiver for it or whatever and they want to just upgrade the sub and get a little more bass. I got this for I think 10 bucks at a thrift store and sold for 59.99. The shipping numbers you see here, it's going to default to my location which is Valrico, Florida. The shipping was a lot more for this item. I don't remember exactly how much it was. I want to say it was like 30, 30 bucks, 25 or 30 bucks. So I made a little bit of money on the shipping as well. FedEx does way, way better for large items. The post office, if you think about it, they have a, they have small those still those 1970s Jeeps, and if you imagine if everybody was shipping TVs and furniture and humongous items with the USPS, they wouldn't be able to fit in there really. I mean, so they generally charge more for bigger items. I mean, literally, like if I had to ship this with USPS, it probably would have been like 50 bucks, and with uh, FedEx, it was probably you know 20 something. So, and that's pretty typical. So FedEx does a lot better with these large items. They're more equipped for it and it's just kind of their niche. Uh, the USPS is fantastic in my opinion with smaller items. They've done very well for me. I do free pickups, you know, schedule a pickup. They come right at the house. I don't ever have to go to the post office unless I forget to schedule the pickup. But um, yeah, so here's a Sony subwoofer. Don't, don't sleep on these if you see them around. If you can get them for a good price, definitely grab it. Also, some vintage speakers like these. They're only 10 watts. I mean, 16 ohms are not, you know, powerful. But if someone has a vintage set, um, and they, you know, they want something like this to go with it. Hey, I'm your guy. Now, but these actually took a, did take a while to sell though. I'm not gonna lie. I think I had them for like three months. Uh, but I got them for, I got these for ten for the pair at the thrift store. 
and with shipping I probably netted about 30 bucks. This is a Samsung uh, Blu-ray DVD home theater system. It actually has a receiver. This uh, is actually a receiver as well. You can plug the speakers right into it. It actually sounded amazing. And this is something that I pieced together. So I, f I sourced the Blu-ray player by itself for a good price. I can't remember how much. I think 10 bucks, 10 or 15. I usually will not pay more than 20 for, for a receiver. And the speakers I sourced at a, at a thrift store, all five. And the subwoofer I also sourced at a thrift store. So all in all, I was into this for about 40 bucks, And it sold for $129.99 plus shipping. No remote. It did have all the all the uh, I did have all the speakers the the correct speakers the speakers for these if you're familiar with these units they plug they have like a color coded plug and uh, they have to fit in kind of perfectly like that so I did have all the speakers uh, the speaker wires I should say for the speakers um, the subwoofer wasn't the original one for the unit but it did the ohms matched up so as long as the ohms match up uh, you should be fine. Obviously, if it's an extremely powerful subwoofer and the receiver's not, I mean, it's not going to sound ideal. But generally, I mean, if the ohms match up and it's a, it's a receiver system of the same brand, it should be fine. I'm no expert by any means, though, obviously. But this was, you know, it's not a super booming system, and I did put that in the listing. Um, I said it's perfect for a small living room or a bedroom, which it is. And I did have a little bit of separation uh, right around in here. It just kind of popped up. I didn't do it. I mean, it was like that when I got it, tested it, it worked perfectly fine, and I did say that in the uh, description that the receiver had some separation along the edges. The subwoofer is a replacement, 3 ohms, blah, blah, blah. So just as long as you disclose it, you should be good to go. It's sold to someone, I believe, in New York. Uh, a couple snapbacks. I'm still selling snapbacks. I will make an exception on my $25 net rule with a snapback because I've, made it, I've commented before on how easy I, it is for me to list these. If you guys aren't familiar with the draft tool, in eBay. If you're selling similar items like this, like I'll, I'll cop like 15 to 20 snapbacks at, at either the Weigh and Pay or at thrift stores or yard selling one day. I'll restore them. I use a little bit of starch, wash them, de you know, sanitize them, use starch to get them nice and get the form back, a little cardboard, you stuff the inside. There are plenty of YouTube videos on how to restore snapbacks. Check those out. But basically, I'll, I'll get like 20 of them. Uh, you have to go on the desktop. You cannot do this from your phone. And you create 20 new listings and you pre-fill out a lot of the information that's standard for example your shipping policy return policy uh, your description I have a template description that I put in every listing so you know we're a small family owned business we you know uh, believe in making everybody all of our customers satisfied with their purchase we've been on eBay for this much time blah blah blah, blah. all that stuff the same in every one of my listings so I just copy and paste uh, the description into all 20 and then I'll add some to each to each uh, listing. I'll add a sentence or two to you know just about the particular item. Um, also, the category obviously is pre-filled out. So uh, the buyer restrictions, the uh, PayPal requirements, immediate payment requirement, all those things um, they take time when you're doing it from your phone or making a listing. So if you can have all those pre-filled out, it's so much faster. I mean, literally, I can do no joke, no exaggeration, um, fifteen to twenty an hour. Um, eh, yeah, 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 literally, I mean, just a couple minutes each. So the slowest thing is really just the loading, but you just, you have this, even have the description kind of pre-filled out. So I'll put like a uh, snapback hat. And then once I go into the, into the draft, then you do that from your, your PC. Like I said, you create the 20 drafts on your PC, pre-fill out all the information that's standard for all the listings, and then it'll transfer over to your phone. So then you go into wherever you take your pictures and you, you do your listing pull up one draft, snap some pictures of it. You can see I, I snapped four pictures, plenty of photographs. I mean, it's not 12, um, but it's enough. Snap four pictures, fill out the rest of the information, Massey Ferguson, whatever. Uh, and that's pretty much it. This is all, this is a standard boilerplate that I use for all my snapbacks. And then you move on to the next listing and it's that easy. So tech, take advantage of that draft tool, guys. It saves so much time. I I, meant, I saw a video where Pete, the, Pete uh, Craigslist Hunter, awesome video. If you, awesome videos. If you guys uh, haven't checked out his YouTube channel, it's uh, Craigslist Hunter. 
but he mentions that you can only do you know two or three or four quality listings in an hour, which is true. I mean, if you're doing it from scratch and you're doing a you know it, it, uh, an electronic item or something that requires a very extensive description, yes, it's going to take you a while. But something like this, it's simple, and you know it has to be the same similar item. So like 20, 20 of a similar item or ten or whatever you're doing. Uh, if it's that, if if it falls into that category, you can bang out quite a few of these listings. So anyway, uh, sold for twenty plus five shipping, got it for pennies really. I mean, you got it the way and pay for probably like twenty five cents. And I'll show a couple other good ones that I sold as well. Uh, here's a cool find. It's a vintage Green Bay Packers sweatshirt, and it was actually like I want to say it was new, but it had. I mean, it was. You could tell it wasn't worn. I mean, somebody. This was a, co a collector's piece. I think this is like from nineteen ninety three, and it still had. The original hologram uh, perfectly intact which is super cool as you can see here January 26 97 sorry um, so this is a no-brainer I mean I came across this and I was like yeah I need green if, if it doesn't sell before football season it'll definitely sell during football season and it's sold now so another be on the lookout for item a bolo item if you will any kind of vintage t-shirts uh, this is a especially concert t-shirt, vintage concert t-shirts, vintage heavy metal t-shirts. This was a uh, orchestra of the light or orchestra, the orchestra starring members of the electric light orchestra. Anyway, I, I got two of these <coughs> at a thrift store and this is the second one that I've sold. Someone overseas. Apparently this, this band is extremely popular overseas and um, yeah, sold very quickly. So just be on the lookout for some of those t-shirts. Also, don't sleep on some uh, VHS tapes. Cassettes and VHS tapes, I don't know if they're making a comeback or if they just still have demand or whatever. But I'll come across these like at the weigh and pay, and I'll just compile them. And I'll only get them if they're sealed, generally. And I'll just kind of put them all together and just make a lot out of them. Get them for literally pennies on the dollar because it's weighed usually. Uh, and this person paid full price. I use Media Mail for shipping. Very, very affordable. Uh, so, you know, I may have been into this maybe just a couple dollars and it was a thirty dollar sale with shipping this is a vintage kind of vintage I guess uh, calculator it's a Victor calculator it was actually intact a lot of times these the back um, parts that hold on to that hold the tape break off these were intact however or this one was intact I had two of them available I keep saying these because as you can see here I had two available this person sent me a message and said he wanted both of them uh, but he didn't want any of the paper. So I sold them both. I made him a deal. I forget how much it was for both, but I think it was like 40 bucks for both of them. Again, cassette tapes. These, I came across these are the way and pay. I looked down and see like three Iron Maiden cassettes at the bottom of a bin, and I just snatched them up real quick. Because Iron Maiden, Megadeth, these guys are highly, highly collectible. And I think I had this as an auction. As you can see here, I had 10 bids on this. I probably could have put it for like twenty four ninety nine or something and just slow played it. But for something that was weighed out, I mean, I was into this for a couple bucks and it sold. I mean, there's a huge demand for this kind of stuff. Not major money makers, but just be on the lookout for any kind of heavy metal cassettes or any type of collectible cassettes because there are still people that definitely listen to that. Uh, this is an old iPhone that I had. I upgraded, to the, uh, upgraded my mom to the 6S Plus and she had the 5S. And I actually still have like a 3G and a 3GS in, in my drawer. But guys, these are like, there's so much demand for these that eBay will actually guarantee that you'll get a certain amount for this. I believe this one was like $167. Uh, that if I hadn't gotten $167 for this item, eBay was going to give me a credit for the difference. And the way, if you have the phone paid off and you legitimately upgrade it, you can actually go online, AT&T or whoever your server is, and you can get it unlocked for free. All you do is put in some information. If it's all legit and you legitimately just upgraded and you don't need the phone anymore, they will unlock it for you. And I actually got it done immediately. I thought I was going to have to wait a few days, but went online, put in the, the uh, I think it was like the serial number and my account information, click submit, and it said congratulations or something, whatever. The phone is now unlocked. So an unlocked phone is going to bring a lot more than obviously if it's attached to a certain carrier. And if it was legitimate, like a lot of times people may, you know, if you come across this from Craigslist or something, I mean, I, you know, you can't do that, obviously. But if it was your phone on your account and you legitimately paid it off and you don't need it anymore, typically the carrier will unlock it for you for free. 
and they bring in great money as you can see another pair of vintage Panasonic speakers here just they, they, they definitely take a while to sell these and the other pair took forever I want to say three months two to three months but they do sell if you can get them for cheap I would say take a gamble on them this one actually had somebody spliced you know spliced one of the cables the other one was intact for some reason but it still did have the original connector um, and they still sold I mean I probably could have got a little more if they were in better condition but I think I got, I got these for five bucks at a yard sale this is a uh, vintage desk lamp and I actually put this in because it's not a good purchase for me I still turned a profit but it, this one literally took like six months to sell while there is demand for these items it's just there's not a lot of demand um, it's a small little des desktop lamp it's really cute for like a small desk or I don't know for someone at work something maybe like a reading reading lamp the buyer was super happy when she got it but just took forever to sell this was a great sale here it's a caterpillar snapback and actually the emblem was like solid metal it's really sweet I don't know if you can see this but it's a nice hat it's got the 994 loader big boy bad boy machinery right there uh, and this sold relatively quickly within less than 30 days I want to say and it sold for full price and it was in really good shape it kind of restored it. it had a little bit of fraying on the inside which I took pictures of but other than that I mean it was it was really clean it was in good shape and for you know for like a 25 cent investment I'll take that all day long uh, vintage kind of Sony camera this thing was complete I mean it had everything case the whole nine manual and it sold for full price don't sleep on these I mean just because it's an old video 8 I know the super 8's are better but if you have the case if you have all the accessories if you have everything not ju just the camera is not going to bring in shit uh, but if you have all of you know the, the entire package and you can sell it turnkey so to speak it will sell I mean this is probably like the fifth or sixth uh, vintage camcorder that I've sold and generally Sony does sell a lot better here's another snapback John Deere I will say John Deere I mean this I got a good money for this one because it's I think it's just like an older school one but the market for John Deere has substantially gone down from the last couple of years from what I hear and I definitely see it I mean I bought a few things and this this you know I'm lucky this sold I think I still have a, a few other John Deere hats but there are still some people that'll buy it but don't expect it to sell overnight or if you see some John Deere stuff out there like don't get too crazy because it's not what it used to be but good sale overall 30 bucks uh, this person did pay full price and I again quarter maybe for that the this is a Yamaha complete set of surround sound speakers uh, the shipping was way more than that I want to say I made I probably made that on the shipping but I uh, got this for 20 at a yard at a uh, thrift store it's complete sounded great kind of a no-brainer Yamaha is a great brand has a big following people that l like Yamaha um, they, they kind of stick to Yamaha and uh, they sounded awesome and this I got these this complete set and then there I got two other bookshelves that were not part of this set and I actually sold both of them already I just sold the bookshelves in July uh, those will be in the July update but good good uh, good profit there be on the lookout for those I, I'm also uh, well I used to play in a salsa band I'm a percussionist um, and I happen to just I came across this the way and pay and I happen to know that Remo makes they don't make these anymore this particular material is, as from what I understand I'm kind of out of the game now but this is called a fiber skin uh, very durable very very easy on the hands doesn't mess your hands up and I saw it like at the bottom of a bin it was a small tambourine I think it was only six inches um, just like weighted I mean it was maybe 50 cents but <clears throat> very collectible if you see any kind of like a, a head like a drum head made of this material it looks like there's little fibers in it just grab it because they don't make that stuff anymore and they're very collectible this is a pretty obvious one Nintendo 64 system got it at the weigh and pay um, got very lucky I was at a, in one bin I happened to jump in the bin there was all these wires on top at first and it was right when they uncovered everything so it was just like complete insanity but start pulling the wires out and boom at the bottom N64 Super Nintendo and a Sega Genesis uh, this was the first one to sell. I actually haven't even listed the other ones yet because I haven't had time to test everything. But these were in great condition. The joysticks on these, one thing to look out for, the joysticks get very loose over time. I used to be a professional uh, GoldenEye player. And I say professional because I did. 
I actually did win, you know, play for money, and I won tournaments and stuff. But um, these will definitely get loose over time. GoldenEye is like one of the most iconic games for this system. If you see that, definitely pick it up. But if you're ever in the, if you see these, two things to do is open this case here and see what's inside of it. If it's the original Rumble Pack, it's not really worth it. Just keep it in the system. But they have an, a different Rumble Pack, what they call that goes in here. I believe it's red. That thing is worth, you know, some money on its own. But definitely open this up and uh, check the joysticks. If these things are loose and they're flopping over, like, don't even bother with the joysticks. But if they're snappy and they're firm, it's a winner, winner, chicken dinner type situation. And I actually bought some of these games at a thrift store just to bundle it up. So I was probably into this maybe because I, I got the system weighed. I got really lucky on the system, so I probably only paid 2 bucks for the system. And I paid, I think, 2 bucks each for the games. I had a WWF game, a NASCAR game, a College Hoops game, and this Shadow Warrior game, which the, the sh this Shadow Man game was actually the most collectible out of all of them. But anyway, sold. These, you know, there's still quite a bit of demand for these. This is a Fisher Price Ocean Wonders Aquarium. It's like a baby crib type deal that hangs over the crib. This was an Amazon reject item. This I sent it into Amazon. The buyer returned it. Don't know why. So I just put it on here. It worked fine. And it sold. And the buyer was extremely happy with it. The buyer actually asked me to, um, to send it to somebody else with a little note. Uh, saying, you know, happy birthday, they, someone had a newborn, which I was happy to do, and the person was extremely happy. All right, these, for my 12 or so years in the corporate world, I know how expensive these, uh, they're called, I guess, classification folders, and they have, like, like, a few tabs in them. People use them for, like, lot files or for, you know, case files or whatever. They're extremely expensive. I think they go for like thirty bucks. Actually, I did put I put a picture here on Walmart. They go for thirty five dollars a box, and I got these at the weigh in pay. And people were just tossing them around like taught them. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa! I was like, let me get that. Let me get that. You all tossing gold around right now. Let me go ahead and get that. And I just started collecting them, and I got three full boxes. I had a few extras that I actually kept for myself. That I'm using for Amazon, but these things are worth money, man. I, mean, I can't tell you. I mean. Probably 15 people walked by these. I mean, people have no idea. So I just I scooped them up. The boxes were kind of beat up, but I don't think no people, especially someone ordering from an office, I don't think they give a crap about the about the box condition. Uh, but I got so I kind of bundled them. Retail they would be over a hundred dollars, so I put them up for 70, saying basically you get a box for free, and it's sold. I mean, I got these for nothing. All right. So as I mentioned before, this is the, this is the situation that I had. So about three months ago, I sold a Sony 200-disc multi-disc uh, CD changer. Uh, I tested it. It worked. had the remote. And the buyer returned it. He said it didn't work. And he sent me this message. And I remember the verbatim, the message said something, that this isn't working. Um, please send a prepaid, prepaid uh, shipping label for this item. And it was like, it was weird. It was like it just stuck in my mind for some reason. So whatever, gave the buyer the benefit of the doubt, returned the item, or he returned the item, I re refunded his money, whatever, no big deal. So about a couple months ago, I changed my store name, and I think that's the only reason why this guy got me again, because I think he keeps track of the people that he scams. And so, <clears throat> sold the item, and these, these pioneers are extremely collectible, especially the six disc changers that work, they, I mean, that's, I've sold a bunch of these already. Sell the item. And about a month later, I get the same message. And I'm like, no way. I'm like, this is the, that, that immediately drew a flag. So I go look, and sure enough, it's the same guy. And I start, I'm like, and I tested this thoroughly. I mean, it worked perfectly. It switched through all the CDs flawlessly. I mean, this thing was in perfect condition. So I checked the buyer's name, and I'm going to put him on blast. If you guys sell on eBay, put this guy on your block list. Peter Q. Nguyen, N-G-U-Y-E-N. Look at his feedback, 7,000, over 7,000 feedback, okay? Now, when you click on his account, oh, yeah, no, good feedback, yep, good buyer, right? Look at the feedback he leaves for others. And do this for other buyers, guys. If you're selling a high-dollar item, check it out. Look at this. 
red, 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 all pretty much red. And then look at this. Delete it early. Check his feedback left for others. Put on your block list. This is these are responses from the from the sellers. Fraud report. Okay. Um, so anyway, so obviously there's some issues there. So I'm like, okay, what like what could this guy be doing? Like why like why like he he obviously took the parts out or whatever. So then I go, I'm like, the only possible thing is that this guy is selling this stuff on Amazon. That these because these a lot of these electronics go for a lot more on Amazon. So I go on Amazon and I search for my model number of my unit, and sure enough, there's one available, and it's for two hundred and twenty nine dollars, and it's the same guy. If you click on his item, he not only has this Pioneer for sale, but guess what else he has for sale? My Sony two hundred disc CD changer. Yep, he's got them all in here. Two hundred disc. This is the same unit that he returned on me. He probably had one that didn't work, took some parts out of it, put it up on Amazon. This is probably actually the one I sold him. Um, and you can tell, like, this, these are all the items he has for sale. Like, this guy is a career criminal. He doesn't sell anything. Look, feedback as a seller, he has none, zero feedback. He doesn't sell any items on here. So the 7,000 number you see here is from all purchases. And he did this to me twice, and that's the only reason why I know. I mean, it's it, there's no other way around it. I mean, this Pioneer uh, six disc changer is it's rare. I mean, it's from like 1993. There's not that many around, especially the exact same model number. So just do yourselves a favor, guys. If you if you sell electronics on eBay, just block this guy immediately. He is an absolute scammer. I called eBay, and. <laughs> I mean, I'm still just dumbfounded. I'm, I'm sweeping it under the rug. I'm taking it as a lesson learned. I'm actually going to be listing my more expensive electronics from now on on Amazon so that this doesn't happen again. But <laughs> so, all right, so let me back up. So he returns the Pioneer to me, and the back of it was completely dented. Like, it, it was obvious. Like, this guy, he didn't even put any styrofoam in the box. I mean, he just put it in a box, sent it back. The back was like, and it was dented to the point where you could tell somebody pried it open, like with a screwdriver or with a cro or crowbar or something. So I opened I get the item back. I open it the, like within an hour of getting it. See the back of it. I'm like, okay, sweet. Like I knew he had scanned me before, so I was waiting to get it back, and I was gonna check the serial numbers to see if they matched. Of course, they matched. This guy's a this guy's a pro. He takes parts out of the the good units and then returns them and says they're defective. So he's not gonna return one with a different serial number. I mean, that's an obvious mistake. So it, the serial numbers match, but then I see the dent on the back, and I'm like, oh, I got this guy. I'm gonna take some pictures. Send, call eBay, I'll send it to eBay and say that he obviously tampered with the item and that, you know, they'll, they'll maybe, you know, they'll take my side on it. Nope. eBay's new policy is that they will not accept photographs as evidence of a buyer tampering with an item. Because apparently back in the day, sellers were taking advantage of that. They were doctoring images and they were saying that buyers were returning items that, you know, in different conditions or whatever. So eBay will, and, I, and believe me, guys, I was on the phone. Like I've been on the phone with eBay many, like for many hours, trying to get this, trying to get my money, my money back from this guy. <clears throat> and really, I just refunded him the money that he paid me. And this was like a weigh and pay item, so I mean, I only paid a couple of dollars for it. But that's besides the point. This guy is a career scammer. He's been doing this on eBay for like ten years. He's been on eBay since two thousand and six, and eBay is continuing to allow this guy to do this. It's unbelievable. So. I take the picture, send it in, and eBay says, nope, the pictures aren't sufficient. So I'm like, well, how much evidence do you need? You have his Amazon page. You have two items that he claimed were defective that I sold him that are both on his Amazon store. And you have photographs of an item that he returned to me that was obviously pried open and, and tampered with. And they said, oh, well, we need, uh, you know, refutable evidence, irrefutable evidence, basically that they need a message within the eBay system. So not, a, not an email or not like a screenshot from something or whatever. It has to be a message within eBay's server where the, the buyer admits that they tampered with the item. And I'm like, this guy's a career criminal. He's not going to admit that he tampered with the item. I mean, are you kidding me? And they're like, well, as an example, sir, you know, uh, someone sold a pair of shoes and um, they asked the buyer if they, you know, tried them on. And the buyer said, yes, I tried them on and wore them around and they didn't feel good, so I returned them. And, that, and obviously, in that case, I mean, it's a pair of shoes. And the buyer admitted that he tried them on, like, because, you know, he was just being honest and maybe they hurt his feet or they didn't, you know, they didn't fit or whatever. It's a completely different situation. You know, eBay needs to 
take it on a case by case. I mean, I opened the package that this guy returned to me within an hour of it coming, and they can confirm confirm that by tracking. I mean, the tracking from USPS gives you, I believe, the time also. It's got GPS, you know, timestamp or whatever. So I would have I wouldn't have even had time to open the unit. I mean, it's a pine. You know, the back of that unit is like solid metal. I mean, I wouldn't I would not have had time to open it, tamper with it, pry it open, dent it. Put it all back together, take a picture of it, send it into eBay. Like, I wouldn't have had time to do that. And they said, no, we won't take that into consideration. So, basically, this guy screwed me twice. So, I put him on my block list, and you guys should do the same. eBay is not going to do anything to help us out. If you have any high-dollar electronics, put them on Amazon. Because eBay, at the end of the day, if this guy gets you or anybody else that's out there gets you, like, there's, they're going to take the buyer's side every time. Even though this guy has all these red flags on his feedback, even though he did it to me twice, even though they have the link of his Amazon store where he's selling these items that these probably these same items that these people that he's claiming are defective are probably in his Amazon store, eBay still would not do shit for me, which is ridiculous. Uh, but lesson learned, I always, you know, anytime something like this happens, I always try to turn it into a positive and just learn my lesson and do better. And I'm just going to learn that I'm going to sell my higher dollar electronics on Amazon. This guy couldn't have bought it from Amazon and returned it because Amazon's a little... Amazon is definitely, uh, you know, if you have good pictures, they'll take pictures for evidence. Um, but eBay is just there, you know, by, by adhering to this practice, and if more people start doing this, you know, eBay is going to result in just being, like, either vintage and antique stuff and just, like, damaged and used electronics. I mean, because people are just going to sell stuff on Amazon. It just doesn't make sense to sell their stuff here if people are going to be doing this. You know, and, and, and really, you know, a couple years ago, I mean, a few years ago, like, this was a big deal. A lot of people weren't buying and selling on eBay because of this. And I, it just it shocks me that this guy has been doing it for so long, man. I mean, it's crazy. And eBay really didn't do shit for me. They did nothing. They just literally said, sorry, just block him. That's what they told me. They said, just block him. And I'm like, well, that's not going to stop him from doing it to other people. And they're like, yeah, well, we're sorry. I did open a fraud case against him, and they're investigating, but they're not going to divulge the results of that information, of the, of the results of, of the uh, investigation. And if they do find him guilty, they're not going to refund my money either or anybody else's money that he scammed. So, scammer alert, Peter Q. Nguyen. He's out of California, but he has two accounts. He has another one that he does from Amazon. I believe it's like, uh, it's a little north. Um, and he, he's, the guy's a pro. I mean, he's a, pro, pro, he's a career criminal, career um, scammer on eBay. You can tell just even by some of the, the verbiage that he uses. It's the exact same guy, and there's no doubt about it. So just be careful, guys, on people like that. Pictures will not save you anymore on eBay, guys. Keep that in mind. And when shitty stuff like this happens to you, just always try to turn it into a positive, guys. Don't let it get you down. Uh, Chad, the Golden Finger Picker, and Pete Craigslist Hunter had a great video. Also, Ronnie had a great video about dealing with conflict in your eBay business and in your e-commerce store. And this is a perfect example. I mean, I was down, man. I was like, I was livid. I was so pissed. And then I thought about it, and I was like, oh, I got a little offer on my Game Boy. Uh, I was like, you know, I'm not going to let this get me down. I mean, all I can do is get pissed. And really, at the end of the day, I just returned the money he paid me. You know, yes, I lost the, the unit, but whatever. I took the, I took the logo, the, the Pioneer emblem off of it, uh, and the cartridge, and the remote. So I didn't lose any money, really, at the end of the day, because I can sell all that stuff. And by the way, guys, yeah, like, like the Sony or Pioneer, those little emblem, the metal emblems that they put on the receivers, like those things sell for decent money. I mean, you can get them for like, like 10 to 12 bucks for those, and they obviously don't weigh anything, so they're easy to ship. But all in all, when something like this happens, when you, do, when you are faced with conflict in your eBay store, if you let it get to you, you let it get you down, it's only going to affect you even more. So try to stay positive, stay in a positive mind state, keep listening, keep selling, I mean, I've been on eBay since 2001, and, you know, this is really the only time that this, something like this has happened. So, you know, the, the, the long, the, the bigger picture definitely outweighs uh, this one scumbag. But, you know, stay positive, guys. Turn it into a positive. Less, learn a lesson. You know, the lesson learned here for me is that I'm not going to sell high-dollar electronics on, on eBay. I'm always going to cross-check on Amazon to see how much you're going for. I mean, you can see, like, some of these Sony... You can get these for for like forty to fifty dollars on on eBay, and you know they're selling for you know this guy's got them for like two hundred dollars. I mean you can see how many he's got, and um, yeah. So hope you guys liked the video. Sorry for the uh, little rant at the end there, but please please be on the lookout for this guy right here. He's a scumbag. Block him. 
I do not want this to happen to anybody else. I, I started doing e-commerce full time because because of YouTube and because of the information that I learned, and I've, I was able to leave my job, and I'm way happier. And I just want to give back to the community. That's why I do these videos. I do a couple how-to videos. I do my sales update videos because it helps you identify trends in in the uh, marketplace. And if I you know come across anybody like this, I try to put him on blast so that he doesn't do that to anybody else or anyone who's watching my videos. Definitely don't want that to happen to you. So thanks again, guys. Please like, please subscribe, please comment. If I offended anyone, I apologize. If I dropped the S-bomb a little too much, I'll try to cut back on that. But that's it. Deuces.